Hey guys, what's up? Tubby here. I know, I know, it's it's been quite some time since I last made a video and I'm sorry about that. But honestly, life has just kept me busy and I haven't really felt like uploading. But then I saw my YouTube channel and it's still kind of gaining views sometimes. So, I mean, damn, that's kind of cool. But 10 months ago, which is the reason to I'm making this video, is that I made a video called my strategy to start climbing reaching grandmasters. So at the time, I think I've been stuck in masters for around two months. No, probably not even two months. I think it's more like two years. Like it's been so long. Like I've been, I've been masters for a really, really long time. So I, I sat down, I made a whole list of how I was gonna improve. And honestly, this video is just gonna be a follow-up video on did I hit grandmasters? And was the list the reason to if I hit it or I didn't hit grandmasters? So yeah, stay tuned and find out in this video. So if you look at the notes that I made for myself back then, this was also when I was in a different room, as you can see, I've moved since. But th the first note that comes up is more water and consistent sleep schedule. So feeling more fresh. And honestly, right after I made this, I think I was able to maintain this first line for around <laughs> four days. Like this was absolutely the worst thing I ever could put on myself because I was currently living at home. I think I, I don't even think I had a job yet when I made this video. So I was living at home. I had a sh shit ton of free time. So yeah, like I was just spamming out league games, which also leads me to the last punch, which says max 10 games on top ADC, which is also like, honestly, that was also just like not doable. Like I tried in the beginning, I think I tried for the first week and it actually went really well. So I was like, damn, this is working. Uh, but then it started going downhill and it just got me like really tilted. So I feel like keeping myself on a limit is something I've learned from them that I shouldn't do. Like I should just play kind of as much as I feel like, even though it's not always the right thing to do, but like putting myself saying that, oh, I, today I only play five games. It's just, it's not possible for me to do that. So I'm not going to try and do that. Even if you look at my season for this season, I think I have around 600, 700, maybe even 800 games played. And it's we're like, what, three, season, three months into the season. So just limiting myself and the amount of games I play is not something I should do. If I really want to do this, which is something I learned recently, then I should start going to the gym because I'm able to like just, you know, take my thoughts away from league. But if I'm just sitting at home all day doing absolutely nothing, then I'm just going to be like, I'm bored. What can I do? Oh, I could go play league game, you know? So staying at home all day is like the worst thing to do if you want to play less league. You actually have to get out and do something else. It might sound really obvious, but like... When you're just alone, home, or you know, you're just chilling at home, like, you just don't really think about, like, oh, I just want to go do something. But honestly, if you want to play less League of Legends, my biggest advice would be to just get something else to do in your life. Don't just say, I'm just going to stop playing League and then I'm going to stay at home doing nothing, because then you'll end up playing League. Anyways, moving on to the second point, which is highlight reviewing. Yeah, I did this, and I feel like I still do this eventually. I do it a lot less than what I did back then when I started. I think this is good to do, so I stick by this. I think this is someone, something everyone should do. If they want to improve, you don't have to highlight review every game because that's going to tire you out, but definitely keep highlight reviewing if you're trying to improve. Just like small things, it doesn't even have to be like the whole like game. You don't have to view every single death. You don't have to view every single kill. You can maybe just be like, okay, there's something happened at minute 23 that I would like to re-see. And that's the only thing you re-see. I would still consider that a highlight review. I think you can learn something from that one moment. If you're just overdoing it, you will gain nothing from it. So yeah, consistent breaks and this includes wins. So this was meant as that I'm going to play like a few games and then I'm going to take a break, right? So I'll play three games. I'll go take a break. I'll go do something else. I think I bought a VR right back then. So I would go play some VR and just kind of chill with that for a little bit. And honestly, this is something that's helped me a lot still to climb with actually. It's hard to do, it's very hard to just go be like, yeah, we're winning, but I'm gonna take a break. For me, that's personally at least really hard to do. But I've noticed when I do this, and it's usually not intentionally when I do it, but when I can do this, and it's not intentional, but I'll still catch myself doing it, that's usually when I'm peaking. So I think this is something I should try and do more. And it can like be anything. So maybe you say, okay, I wake up, I play three games, then I go to the gym, then I come back and maybe I'll play more. I'll not play more depending on how I feel after the gym, right? So it's like just doing something else in between is probably what's like 
make it have been making me do this unintentionally because i was like okay so i can just fit in a few games then i gotta go to school or i gotta go to the gym or i gotta go shopping because you know now i'm living on my own so i have to do shopping too it's just like there's a lot of a lot more things have come in my life where i have to go do stuff which means i have less time to play and then sometimes i'll just fit in a few games and then i'll go do it and then i'll fit in a few games and i'll do something else right and this Honestly, I should just keep doing because this is what is going to make me peak. And I think this is one of the things maybe that I misunderstood when I was trying to do it on my say uh, with this whole strategy because I was like, I'm going to play less, but I'm only going to play less on my main account. And it's just like, maybe some people can do that, but I definitely couldn't do that. So uh, playing less, sure, that sounds really nice. But then just saying, okay, I'm just going to play less on my main account and then go spam 20 games in a row on my Smurf account that just became so even though it's a smurf account if i've had a bad session on my smurf i would go tilted into main account games so for me if i want to play less i should just play all around less i shouldn't just be like well i played three games on my main today so now i can go smurf for the rest of the day i should just stop playing after those three games or if i want to keep playing i should just keep playing on my main account i don't think smurfing for me is necessarily the right thing to do because i'm not able to mentally differ differentiate my losses even though i'm smurfing i get just as tilted as if i'm winning or if i'm losing on my main account it's just it's the same thing for me i just get frustrated when i lose so it's like i'm not really differentiating that okay now i'm losing in gold i shouldn't care like no i i do still care it's just and it actually gets worse sometimes because I'm like, i should not be losing in this low elo so but yeah i mean i think what most of you guys are here for honestly is just like did i actually hit grandmasters now um and what is going on now with my league career and yeah, I did actually hit Grandmasters. I actually peaked quite early in the season. Uh, with that, I mean, like, I hit Grandmasters quite early. It took me 11 days in the season to hit Grandmasters. And then it's kind of like, okay, so you went from being two years stuck to now hitting Grandmasters in 11 days in the early season. That's because the LP is low, right? And yes, actually, that is exactly why I hit Grandmasters in the first place. The LP was very low, so when I hit Grandmasters, it was actually lower than the LP I peaked Masters in before. But on the right side, I did manage to maintain it. And if you go look at this website called LOL Pros, here you can actually see, so if I look up myself, you can actually see that. Well, right now I'm a bit low again. I actually, I'm, I'm at my all-time low in a while. I think even lower than when I started in the season, so that's pretty sad. But... I have peaked 750 LP, right? Which is still a Grandmasters right now. So if I were to hit it again right now, I would I would actually go back in Grandmasters. And I'm pretty confident I can. I've just been doing a lot of stuff in life. And I've kind of been on and off with League uh, this past like two weeks. So I kind of plan on just getting back in and grinding it out again because I want to get back up. And I'm also looking for teams. So like when, when people are, you know, looking to get teammates, they, they often will just look at like, you know, like if we're, if you were to compare me now, like I'm 306 LP versus 752, who are you going to pick just, you know, just based from the LP because you don't know me, I'm a random. Well, you're going to pick the 752 one. So I probably should try and get back up if I wanted to get on a team that is, you know, significantly better than what I can get on with 306 LP. But uh, fortunately for me, I actually secured a few spots already in tryouts with the 750 while uh, when I was all the way up there. So those I still have to play which is nice but yeah so if you look at the graph you can also see that i it took me quite some time before i even fell back down so i was sitting for like around a good month or so above 400 lp i think maybe even above 400 lp for almost two months um so yeah i feel like overall I just improved in my consistency and I finally started to understand what I needed to improve from the last season because I was like, I had so many ideas of like, I should do this and I should do this in real life and I should maybe sleep less, you know, I should sleep here, I should drink more. Like those were not really the factors of what made me improve at the game. If you go look at the OPGD that I have, I think this is what actually made me improve as a player the most. It was realizing some very few things that I, I realized them actually a while back but it took me so long to learn them so i already i realized this like a season bef uh, a lot, like somewhere in last season i would say i realized this so i started comparing every single high elo challenger ad carry to my opgg to look what was the difference because 
I know it's crazy, but stats and numbers usually actually tell a lot from what you can improve at in your gameplay. So like OPG doing reviewing myself like this was actually quite useful because what I noticed was that every single challenger player, pretty much like there was almost not a single challenger player who didn't have at least eight CS per minute as an average of CS under AD carry gems. And then I was like, okay, what do I have? Well, I only had 7.5 at the highest. That was my highest champion, 7.5 CS per minute. So already that I could be like, okay, so I'm lacking 0.5 to require the minimum of being a challenger player in farming per minute, right? But this actually forced me to start rotating better, to start realizing when I should pick more jungle camps up and stuff like that. And it, it started, to allow me to 1v9 more games, just from this little thing. But making that CS number go up by 0.5 was actually a lot harder than it seems like. It seems like nothing, but it was insanely hard to do. And I'm still like struggling to even keep it up there. And I think lately I have not been very good at keeping the number up there. Uh, so that's one thing. And then I think another thing that I did that I usually have never done is that I started to play just two champions. So like if you look at the OPGG right now, you can see that I have 245 games. I've lost a shit ton on Siri lately because of the, I think she got nerfed three or four times in a row now. So she's kind of got it. But I was on 55% win rate when I hit 200 games so far. And then I hit 226 games with 54% here on Sire, right? So I have like 200 games, but I don't have 100 games plus on any of the other AD carries. I kind of started to play a bit more of the others because right now I'm a bit bored. But my point is that, I, okay, so I realized, okay, I, what do I need to improve at? Well, I needed to improve at CSing better per minute. So that was like my full focus. How do I rotate better? How do I still be impactful while also having farm? Because that is very hard to do. It's It's... It's funny because a thing I see a lot is that a lot of gold players who I coach, they have better farm per minute than I do. <laughs> but then if you look at their kill participation, they're not that part of the game the first 25 minutes. And then it's just like, okay, so why are you not winning your games? Well, you're not, you're not really joining the fights or anything, right? Well, I am at least doing that. So you can for sure have high CS per minute and still lose because you also need to figure out how am I useful? Where, how am I at the right place at the right time while also being able to farm enough CS so that I'm ahead of the enemy they carry in pretty much most of the ELO. Uh, and that was really hard to do. But yeah, so this is actually how I hit Grandmasters and it wasn't really by following the notes. So my whole point of this video is just to tell you guys that if you're really trying to climb, don't, don't focus on the wrong things, you know, like, <laughs> wow, such good logic. Yeah, or like such good uh, advice, like, just don't focus on the wrong things, guys. It's simple now. Honestly, it's not simple, but like, just try to not focus on the wrong things, you know? So like, don't focus on things you're doing in real life. Obviously, yeah, maybe you're gonna lose more games if you're playing while you're in a bad mood, or if you're playing while you're completely sleep deprived. Sure, you should feel decent in real life when you play, but I don't think you have to have the perfect sleep schedule. You don't have to have done all of your homework today to play League of Legends game. You just need to feel all right and be able to focus on the game. If you can feel all right and focus on the game, you don't really need all this stuff. Like your life doesn't need to be perfect for you to play. And that's something I feel like I was trying to do. Like you don't need to fucking drink water. If you just want to drink Coke all day long and play League of Legends, you can do that and still be winning. Like you don't have to drink water. So it's like I was just focusing on the wrong things. And when I finally started comparing my gameplay to higher ELO players, and realizing, okay, so their stats, what are just the basic stats? Are they dying more? Are they dying less? How much CS per minute do they have? What's their builds? What's their win rates? What summoners do they go? When you start can compare stuff like that, and then maybe watch a few of their games and see what they're doing in certain matchups compared to what you're doing in certain matchups. So if you can find like a game where you played, you can play the exact same matchup as some pro player did, then you can have like a really good way of reviewing that matchup. That's something I actually did with Upset when he was playing a lot of Nami Lucian. I would also play a lot of Nami Lucian just to try and copy him. So it's not even because I wanted to play Lucian. I just wanted to try and copy him to see how simple it would be. And the lanes were actually easier to win because I was just straight up copying what he would be doing in the lane. I would just imagine how he was going to play the lane and I would try and do the same. And for me that worked out. So yeah guys, I hit Grandmasters. I hit my goal this season. 11 days into the season I hit the goal. I just wanted to hit Grandmasters. I'm fine with not hitting Challenger, I said. I just want to hit Grandmasters. I hit it 11 days in, and then I was kind of like, I kind of want to hit Challenger. 
Right now, I don't know. I don't know if I can hit Challenger. I was three wins away from Challenger when I was at my peak at 750. There's three wins. So it feels like maybe it's possible to do it, but I'm not sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video regardless. I know it's just a lot of talking and ranting, but I just wanted to do this to come back. So I'm going to try and start uploading more regularly and more back to the old content. And I'm also going to keep doing my coaching things again because I feel like I've only gotten better. So that should only be easier. I've done a bit coaching on this side just from people who asked me if they could get some. So if you're still interested in coaching from me, I'll have a link into a Discord down in the description where you can see all the details. I do it both in Danish and English now. So if you're interested in Danish coaching or English, make sure to join the Discord because you can read in both languages there. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one, which will be out within five months. I promise you that one. Peace.